it was such an elegant idea to have a stent that does its job and then quietly disappears. It hasn't worked out quite that way. It's a little less elegant than maybe we thought. We're talking about stent thrombosis with bioabsorbable vascular scaffolds. This is a meta-analysis, and I'm with Dr. Alok Sarav, who is an MD, Crichton University Medical Center in Omaha, where you're a third-year fellow. And we really were looking forward to some of this technology working, and it's been a little bit more uh, difficult than that. Why did you do this study first off? So the reason why I did this study is that, you know, like this, uh, as you said, bioabsorbable vascular scaffold, they seem to be an interesting idea conceptually because you have the benefit of uh, um, having a stent uh, uh, and you know open that artery in the acute situation, and but it don't have the don't have to deal with all the side effects long term. Uh, uh, but uh, all these uh, randomized trials which came up last year, they kind of you know raised eyebrow about increased uh, stent thrombosis rate or possible uh, increase in stent thrombosis rate. So that's why we focused do, uh, on doing this meta analysis because uh, we wanted to further explore whether you know like any there is any increase in definite stent thrombosis rate uh, with this uh, studies uh, with, uh, with this stent. Um, uh, so that was basically the main idea behind doing this meta-analysis. Uh, so what we found in our study, um, uh, uh, and we only uh, took uh, into consideration definite stent thrombosis rate, that showed a significant statistical trend uh, with a p-value of 0 0.06. That means that there is definitely increased concern, but it's not, again, you know, statistically significant. Uh, we also looked at uh, various uh, stent thrombosis subtypes, you know, like uh, uh, acute, subacute, and late uh, stent thrombosis, and none of them reached statistical significance. So uh, bioabsorbable uh, vascular scaffold, you know, they can, they have the potential to become, you know, you can say holy grail of coronary stent. Uh, uh, but right now we have to be very judicious in using them and uh, very cautious about their use uh, because they increase uh, the there is increased concern about the stent thrombosis I, yeah. you looked at mi right well, we looked at MI, yeah. So stent thrombosis, uh, uh, you know, the clinically it manifests as MI. So our belief is that the MI is also significant. Uh, we, that's what we found in this study. And uh, our belief is that the stent thrombosis increased the risk of MI, uh, which was found to be significant in our study. So I think they kind of go side by side. Uh, and our, our belief was that though we couldn't further tease out, you know, like whether it was MI rate was uh, increased in uh, first 30 days vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, you know, subsequently. Uh, but our, our belief is that it's the stent thrombosis rate uh, uh, that was high in the first 30 days, which increased the MI rate. What do you come away with as a conclusion? Some of the stuff is just a trend. Everything seems to be trending in the wrong direction, yeah. but it yeah. is still a trend. Yeah. What faith do you have in the numbers, and where do you think it's going from here? No, it's a pretty robust meta-analysis given the, you know, like sheer size of the patients which are included this meta-analysis and majority of them are randomized trials. Uh, certainly it doesn't take the bioabsorbable vascular scaffolds off the table uh, because, you know, like you have to remember that still it's a first generation bioabsorbable vascular right. scaffold. And if you, uh, we don't have a comparison um, against the, say, the first generation regulating stents which came up, you know, like in 2002, 2003. And uh, if you just, you know, like have a, uh, theoretical comparison um, with those stents, yeah, you know, like you'll know that the uh, outcome rates were also higher with the first generation uh, drug eluting stents, and we don't use them anymore. So, but, you know, the way they have developed, you know, these first uh, drug eluting stents over the period of time, now we have the third generation ever muscle eluting stents, which are pretty good and very, very low stent thrombosis rate. Uh, I think uh, looking at into the future, I think there will be improvement in the design, you know, like this... Uh, um, bioabsorbable vascular scaffold, they have a very, you know, thick stent struts, and that's one of the things, you know, might cause increased uh, risk of stent um, uh, thrombosis. Uh, it hasn't been studied well yet, but, you know, like when you try to inflate the stent against the vessel wall, there might be areas where, um, you know, the stent is not well opposed, and uh, or there will be always chance of, you know, like under expansion of the stent, which we know are the factors for increased stent thrombosis. I think more studies are needed. Um, in this area to see, you know, um, um, uh, whether we can improve the design of the stent, which will, you know, you know re re reduce the risk of stent thrombosis rates in future. 
Well, it's a challenge for certain, and thank you very much for your time. And no what I want to tell you is that we have the abstract for Dr. Sarava and also all the others that are being presented here at CRT in the February 22nd issue of Jack Interventions. So see the supplement to that issue for Cardiosaurus World News. I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.